Hi everyone, it's Tim here with the stats update for April 2023. So as a quick reminder of the system we have, we have a 6.8 kilowatt uh, array split east and west, so 3.4 kilowatts on each side. And we have a Gen 2 hybrid 5 kilowatt inverter uh, from Give Energy coupled to two of their batteries, a, a 9.5 and a, a 5.2, uh, totaling 14.7 uh, kilowatt hours. So yeah, let's see what uh, happened this month. So this is the first full month we've had our system up and running and you can see we've generated a healthy 586.8 kilowatt hours from the solar array. Uh, some of which went into the battery, some of which went to the home, but generally speaking we were self-sufficient. So we consumed 396.9 kilowatt hours, which uh, meant we generated more than we consumed. So you can see there, in fact, that uh, the only grid use we had was on that first uh, first day of the month. Um, the rest of the time, we charged the batteries from the solar and we used um, what came from either the solar or the batteries to, to power the home. So that's great. Um, we actually switched to Octopus Flux partway into the month. Um, and the remaining uh, stats that I'm going to show you um, are based on just assuming that we were with Octopus Flux for the whole month because it's it's just easier that way to calculate the costs and everything else. Um, but for the first few days we were actually on um, Octopus Go. So that first day um, that was us charging the car and filling the battery um, on the Octopus Go uh, cheap rate. Um, so that will slightly skew the uh, the cost calculations later but not so much that I'm super worried and it's only indicative anyway. It's not massively important that we get the numbers completely precisely correct. Um, but you can see there we were basically um, not uh, using any grid power at all. And in fact, if I show you that in this particular chart, you can see how stark that is. Uh, just the first uh, day of the month there that we consumed anything. Um, the rest of the month, um, we were consuming no more than about 0.1 kilowatt hour per day, something like that, uh, which I'm pretty pleased with. I'm think, I think the system is, uh, is working pretty well and uh, balancing our, our needs uh, quite close to uh, basically zero consumption. Conversely, if I look at what was exported back to the grid, um, a lot of that is from the solar. And the last few days, you can see there, we uh, exported a little bit from the battery to the grid because we've switched now to the Octopus Flux tariff. And it took until the 26th before um, the export part of the flux tariff kicked in. So uh, there was no point us really um, exporting the battery to the grid until um, the last part of the month. Um, and you can see we've just started experimenting with, uh, with exporting some of the excess um, from the battery out to the grid. And then we're gonna be charging up overnight uh, during the, uh, the cheap flux period uh, a little bit and then exporting a little bit uh, in the uh, early evening. So uh, what our plan is for May is I'm going to tinker a little bit. I'm going to experiment by um, charging the battery a little bit more overnight and exporting a little bit more during the uh, the peak period. Um, but for now, I'm just exporting for one hour. I'm exporting from uh, 6 until 7 p.m. Uh, at full, full rate. Um, and then I'm charging the battery up to about 75, 80% overnight, um, ready for the following day. Um, but none of that happened in April. That's all for May. So I'll be showing you that, showing uh, May's statistics uh, next month. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Um, but for now, uh, April was basically just us using the solar and uh, as much as possible and using that to basically cover all of our needs. And if I go back to the home consumption chart here, you can see of the 396.9 kilowatt hours that we uh, that we consumed through that month, um, I can tell you that actually the heating uh, made up 106.6 kilowatt hours. So about a quarter of our energy use was the heating, and that's um, that's an air-to-air -air heat pump system, um, which um, averaged about 3.6 kilowatt hours per day. Um, so just sort of ticking over in the morning for a couple of hours and then we would basically turn it off for the rest of the day. Um, and uh, about 100 kilowatt hours was us charging uh, Cat's new EV. Um, so approximately half of our total consumption was either heating um, or the car um, charging, but even that was covered by our generation. So I'm super pleased about that. Um, the, rem the rest of the, uh, the consumption was for the home, that was 190 kilowatt hours. Um, that averaged about 6.3 uh, kilowatt hours per day. So um, that's the sort of level that we're expecting for the rest of the, the summer. Um, the heating is now off, so we won't be uh, won't be using uh, the heating anymore. So I'm expecting the car to continue to use about 100 kilowatt hours per, per month and the home to use somewhere in the region of 200 kilowatt hours. So I'm expecting it for the rest of the summer, our home use is going to be roughly 300 kilowatt hours uh, per month. And um, we're clearly going to be generating more than that. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what happens with the uh, the uh, flux export and how much we're going to get back from, from uh, Octopus for that. 
So what does that actually mean in terms of how much it's cost us this month? Well, according to Octopus, um, when I calculate on, based on the half hourly data that, uh, that I've extracted from their system, uh, I have calculated that it has cost us four pounds and six pence for the electricity that we consumed uh, during uh, April. If you add the standing charge of uh, 52 pence uh, a day onto that, that gives us a grand total of 10 pounds and 93 pence. Now, if we'd um, uh, used the standard flexible octopus tariff, that would have cost us 141 pounds 49 pence, which means that we're um, actually saving about 130 pounds and 55 pence. But that doesn't account for the fact that we're we're currently still using gas for our hot water. Uh, we do plan on switching over to um, using uh, overnight electricity to heat our hot water instead and get our gas disconnected. Um, I've actually contacted Octopus to to get the gas disconnected because we're making progress with uh, replacing our gas hob with an induction one at the moment. We're more on that uh, in our um, chats update video. Um, but uh, for now, we're still using gas for the hot water, and that came to a total of thirty three pounds. 76. So if I add that on to the £10.93 that we paid for our electricity, that comes to £44.70. So uh, yeah, that's super interesting. I'm very pleased with how it's going. Um, I'm expecting, um, given that we literally only had the last handful of days of the month uh, with the Octopus uh, Flux export tariff uh, in operation, um, we didn't make full use of that obviously this month so uh, in uh, the current month May and or the rest of the summer I'm expecting that to uh, be significantly better and contribute um, quite a lot of, uh, of additional savings to our to our bills so that'll be interesting to see. Um, I will look forward to uh, giving you the full update next month but for now thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.